Hey guys, welcome to Bulldozer Overclocking. Uh, this is a little video preview of my guide to come tomorrow. This is the monitor. Uh, this is my voltage, 1.408. And let's take a look at my gigahertz, alright? This is my gigahertz. 4.838 gigahertz on a 236 HTT. 4 gigabytes of memory. And that memory is running at 2200 megahertz. Um, pretty impressive for AMD platform, I'd say. Uh, kind of like Lano, Bulldozer has great memory overclocking. Multiplier uh, set 20.5, stock 17.5. Uh, this is an 8120 processor. It's not an 8150. Notes bridge frequency set at almost uh, 2.6. HT Link sets is 2.6. At stock, HT Link is 2.6. CPU North Bridge is at 2.2. Um, there isn't much performance gains from increasing or decreasing those. I would keep them about equal. Um, that is what the optimum overclock settings of DRAM EOCP do. DRAM EOCP is an automatic like system boost. All right, you change these settings right here, and your multipliers for Northbridge frequency and HT link change on the fly. Um, when you set this, uh, you can set up the DDR2400, or you can set your XMP profile, which is what I've done here. Once you set your XMP profile, it changes system voltages to manual, um, not optimized. Uh, and it sets it to 1.65, which is what SPD recommends for this module. Um, so here we have some memory timings. Is T2. I had trouble getting to T1. Uh, CAS7. Um, but the rest of the timings are pretty raw. Um, so I have raised my uh, CPU voltage to 1.3875. That's giving me a 1.408 voltage. Uh, this is hardware reading from the back of the motherboard. Uh, you can see it right here. All right back of the motherboard has some wire solder to it and then those wires are going to my digital multimeter CPU NB at 1.275 I'm up that to 1.3 alright actually I'm not done showing you some settings okay uh, advanced BIOS features you want to disable all this uh, C1E, C6 virtualization K8, CPU unlock, disable those straight down. But you see CPU unlock is available. CPU core 1 to 2 here is enabled by default. These are special settings for LN2 benching. Uh, this BIOS is not publicly available. Um, so they're all enabled right here. If I disable these, I can disable those cores, see which ones are better, see which ones I can get to 8 gigahertz with. Um, this is a nice little BIOS here. I've disabled full screen logo as well. So let's reset right here. And then we'll take a look at how everything performs, shall we? All right, so we're loading up. Let's see our voltage, 1.408. All right. Also, I should note, I should mention that low-line calibration is enabled for CPU NB voltage on the 990FX8 UD7. Um, and uh, this is a UD7, and the UD5 is the same type of circuitry, so expect that as well. Now, we haven't really looked over the system much. Uh, this is a special gigabyte stand, so please don't ask me if you can buy it. Please don't ask me where you can buy it or who you can ask to buy it. Because um, I've already had about five people ask me once I just posted a raw picture of the system. Um, it's specially made for gigabyte. Uh, they're custom ordered, and they don't sell them retail. And I had to basically get on my knees and beg for it. And I did suddenly get one. Uh, it was a surprise for me. Uh, it's not the easiest bench to work with. And uh, it does get the system components hot, so it's not really what you want for overclocking. But it's in a display case because it's a beautiful system. It's a beautiful motherboard. And I'll show you, all right? The motherboard has some really nice features. Um, we're going over right here. So the heat sinks are really nice. Uh, you have your graphics processor right here. The uh, system is cooled. Now, I have that fan right there uh, for the memory. And that's actually cooling down the heat sinks as well for the North Bridge and the VRX. Uh, these fans here, uh, they're usually the radiator in a case uh, doesn't have blowing in or out, uh, so you don't really depend on that when you have a water cooling solution like this to cool down those heat sinks on the VRM, which is important on AMD system. It also seems to have like 20 phases, this only has 8 plus 2. So they're high quality, but you gotta watch out. See the fan is going up and down, and uh, this Antec software is pretty nifty, and lets me know by how much, and I really like that about this software. Um, Right now it's a 44 dB, 34.0 C is the uh, temperature of the uh, water, and when that goes up I have a ramp up temperature set at 36 degrees and a full fan speed of 51 degrees. To further control this, I have EasyTune 6 set here. EasyTune 6 has a special uh, smart fan tab, 
The smart fan tab uh, allows me to control the fan uh, voltage, which powers the fans for the radiator. And those has a plug into the board. It's a little intricate wiring system. AMD probably has the same type of system set up. HW monitor right here, 1.4 volt reported in the board. 1.408 reported on my little thing. So let's get it going, all right? So I'm going to shut this down because it's not really needed. I'm going to open Overdrive because a lot of people want to see how Overdrive works. And they're probably going to start using it. I don't really recommend it for overclocking. In fact, please don't use it for overclocking inside Windows. That's not how overclockers should overclock. Um, but Easy Tune is good to use if you're LN2 benching. I have used it and it can easily change uh, front side bus. I've used it to change my front side bus as HTT, enough for me to get up to uh, 5.34 gigahertz on air as my max overclock. That was just for a dead run screenshot at 1.55 volts. But let's just show you what this CPU can do. We're at 4.8 gigahertz, 1.4 volts. All right, guys, and let's uh, let's get some benches going. All right, um, let's try one bench right now. W Prime. Alright, so we're going to run Prime right here, um, W Prime. All my cores went to 100, and it's almost done. It's uh, done now. Alright. View score, 7.784 seconds. Let's take a look at that. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, let's pause for a second. And take a look at what happened to our voltage when we ran this. So let's run it one more time. Voltage went up. Uh, on LLC on, LLC on most boards will do this, and uh, I have some settings enabled here that will do that as well. Um, so you see that voltage and all cores went to 100% as well as W prime. Um, so maybe let's try uh, Super Pi right now or Sign Bench. People want to see Sign Bench, so let's skip Super Pi and do a Sign Bench. All right? I've been getting inconsistent results in all programs I've been using. Sign Bench loads to 100% on all cores. You see that right there. I'm going to exit out of that to decrease loading. Now watch these center ones, all right? We see the voltage going down a little bit to 1.394. You saw our original wasn't that bad, so there's some good voltage holding. Sign benches does some nice application tasking. But you see these here? These two cores seem to be lagging, and then these two seem to be lagging. It seems like the core balancing on the threads of bulldozer are being bottlenecked somewhere, either at the modules in the cache where the cores interact, or... I don't know, but it seems to decrease Bulldozer's performance. Bulldozer is not hitting 7 whatever in Sign Bench. I haven't been able to pull that off. Actually, I was able to pull that off. Um, but only with special settings with very high HTT. Sign Bench loves HTT. So I'm guessing we're going to hit maybe high 5s, uh, low 6s, which HTT and multiply right now. That'll give you an idea if you look at some uh, of the other uh, reviews of what to expect. All right. So it's about done right now. We got a score right here, not the highest I've hit, 6.58, alright, and I hit 6.59 at uh, 5.7 gigahertz, but with a higher HTT. That shows you, that really shows you, right, that shows you uh, how much HTT affects the clocks and the performance. Of course, uh, SuperPi likes this better. Um, SuperPi likes a higher, um, a higher uh, clock, alright. So I'm going to end this demo right now and give you another look, shot, at the board because it's really a nice little system to look at. Bulldozer is 8 cores, 8 real cores, no 4 cores in HT, but uh, a little bit less than what we were expecting. Maybe new stepping will be a little better. But this board is high tech, supports SLI natively. Uh, we're running NVIDIA GPU in here and it's running pretty well. Memory overclocking is high. Um, highest megahertz I've reached is... Uh, what did I say? 5.34 right now. Tomorrow I'm going to do liquid nitrogen overclocking. Alright, so I've had a good time today with you guys. So tomorrow we'll pour some LN2 on it. And see how it does, alright? Yay! <laughs> alright guys, have a nice day, alright?